Welcome, welcome to Angry Appliance Repair Person. For the record, you're looking at them. This presentation is going to be about the noises that a washing machine can make. We get a lot of calls from homeowners that are comparing their old machine and how it sounded to their new machine. Now, there are a lot of reasons. Some of it has to do with energy savings. Some of it has to do with the company saving money and trying to give you a washer for a cheaper price. So there's a lot involved, but I'm going to go over some of the noises themselves so you understand. Is my washer actually broken or isn't it? A lot of the new washing machines, same in the last 10 years or so, they are going to have more plastic gears and mortars than the older ones did. So there are certain machines out there that will actually literally clunk when they shift from the agitation to the spin. So you could hear, and I'll do my best, click, 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 clunk. And then it will start to move, whether it's watching or spinning. That is a plastic clutch moving something to lock something into position. People think there's something wrong. This is a really loud, unusual noise. My old one didn't do that. That's true. Your old one did not do that because it didn't have the plastic pads that these have. So since it didn't have the same plastic pads that these had, a lot of times the newer units are louder. So. With that being said, some of the common noises I hear, there's a couple brands out there that the machine will pulse the water in. So instead of the water flowing in very nicely, it'll go and it will continue that throughout the whole cycle. It fills as it's needed because the government wants us to save money. Whether we like it or not, that's the way it's going to be. So since the government likes us to save money, the machines do not want to fill with more water than they're allowed to. So they pulse the water in instead of just letting it flow in once and stop. That is one noise you may hear. Another noise you may hear is when the unit is a top load, when the top load washer is washing or agitating if you want to call it that. Whether you have an agitator or you have one of the little plates on the bottom, it can sound as I like to refer to a duck. That is just the plastic gears moving back and forth to allow it to move and make its motion. Again, it's plastic. It's just the noise it makes. It is not broken. It is not dying. That is what they do. Some of the front load washers, they will actually make some noise when they are revving up. Customers think that there's something wrong because the machine is going from a slower speed to a faster speed and it shakes the machine a little bit depending on the floor you're sitting on. Again, it does not hurt the washer. Also, the tub moves back and forth. It might make a little noise before it gets up to spin. Again, doesn't hurt it. It is just gaining momentum to spin fast to get the water out of the clothes. That's it. So front load machines, I admit, are usually quieter than the new top loaders. The new top loaders are more noisy because they do not always have metal gearing. They have more plastic gearing, which sounds different. I don't like the word noisy. I like the word different. They sound different and people are concerned. But as long as the machine does its job as best as it can, which on previous presentations we spoke about agitators versus no agitators. So when you have that kind of machine, you can expect certain results. But as long as the machine is going through its cycle, if it's making some bang noises here and there, it's making some pulsing noises, it's actually moving around, not walking. Walking is bad. A machine should never move. But if it shakes, I guess is the best thing to say, if it shakes back and forth a little bit and it rumbles a little bit, but yet it still gets up to speed and still does its job and it does not walk. A washer should never walk. It should always stay in place. But every once in a while, you may get one that is making a noise that your old one did not. Do not think that it is broken with these new electronic plastic style machines. The pulsing noises are okay. The clunking noises are okay. The funny noises it might make while it's stopping. And of course, the big one, you're standing there waiting to get the, but what is that smartest man in the house? 
Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Please. Thank you for reminding me. So since some of the machines are belt driven and some of the machines are not belt driven, that can also create a noise. The belt driven machines do make a certain sound where the direct drive machines are a little louder. They will actually rev and make some noise as they're going. Some of them make these loud clicks as the machine is gaining speed, especially the front load. So the direct drive motors, they make some unusual noises where the belt drive motors did not. Thank you, smartest man in the house. I would have forgot that. Uh, and now at my very advanced stage, I don't remember where I was. Oh, now I do. So if the lid, uh, one of the popular things is when the lid is locked. When the lid is locked, people get there and they grab that lid and they're thinking, why is it buzzing? Why can't I get this lid open? The lid has to stay locked until the tub comes to a complete stop. Sometimes that can take up to five minutes and that little solenoid in there can actually make a noise where it's buzzing a little bit until the lock is released and then you can open the lid. Do not force that lid open. If you hear a strange noise coming from your machine and you think you have to stop it, do not force the lid open. Make sure you stop the machine with the pause button or the cancel button. Wait for the lid to open if you need to make a change. I change lots of locks because people get rambunctious, there's a big word for you, rambunctious that they open that lid and they break the lid lock and then I have to come out and fix it. So as long as the machine is doing its job and it is not walking out of place, more than likely it, the noises you are hearing are what it is supposed to do. Don't let it concern you. Just make sure it doesn't move and it still does the job it's supposed to do. So for the senile thought each week, I want to talk about a very popular subject that people always ask me, extended warranties. Are they a good idea or are they not a good idea? Extended warranties cover most of what you are buying on the appliance. Now what I mean by that, don't assume that the extended warranty covers everything. On a future presentation I will go into more detail about that. But for this one, we are going to talk about should you even consider it. If you give me an appliance, I'll give you a problem. Appliances always have problems. You can't assume that because it's new, it will not break. That is bad. When I was a wee little tot, it was very rare for something brand new to be broken. Today, that is not the case. We do a lot of warranty work. So there is a lot of things that go wrong, especially with all of this technology that we use, like the camera I'm talking into right now. I can't assume that that camera isn't going to last me years just because it's new. So you can't assume that with your washer or your dryer or your refrigerator. So extended warranties are becoming more popular. I always say it depends on the price. If you decide to buy a luxurious, expensive appliance that was a lot of money, don't assume that it is going to be trouble free for five years. That is a very bad assumption. Appliances do like to fail within five years time. So if that happens, you have an extended warranty. There's no charge. Always it comes down to money. If you have the money to buy an extended warranty, the only two questions I would ask the salesman, who is going to do the work? You don't want to buy an extended warranty and don't have anyone to do the work. The extended warranty is not the manufacturer. The extended warranty is an insurance company. You have to find who does that work. So if you buy it from a dealer, ask them. Ask them for that information so you have it. If they say, oh, no, no, you just have to call the company and they'll take care of it. Don't necessarily believe that. You have to make sure you have someone to do the work under the insurance. I have a lot of homeowners that I go out to. They pay me, even though they have an insurance policy, because that insurance company doesn't have a representative in their area. Make sure you know who does it. And then number two, if it is a very expensive appliance, you don't want to have to spend in a, buying another expensive appliance, if that's what you want, for a replacement in five to seven years. Extended warranty might be a good idea. But if it is a cheaper appliance and you think, well, you know, if it breaks, I have him come out, he tells me what's wrong. And if it's too expensive, I'll just buy a new one because I didn't pay that much to begin with. Eh, maybe the extended warranty is not a good idea. But one thing you want to keep in mind, usually within the first five years of ownership, extended warranties don't cost that much. So since they don't cost that much, you may want to consider it because one visit from a serviceman normally pays for that extended warranty. And in my experience, in this time, 
we do more work under warranty and under extended warranty than people pay us because appliances are known, especially certain things on appliances, are known to fail under five years. Think about it. So, we thank you for spending some of your day with us.